All right, you guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Jason. For those that are new, this is my husband. Today, he is going to do his most embarrassing stories. And apparently, he says he doesn't get embarrassed very often. Correct? <laughs> no, I don't get embarrassed very often because lots of we all do stupid things. And sometimes it's like, oh, I did that. All right. <laughs> and so I'm not really that embarrassed. He is going to tell his most embarrassing moment. So make sure you go subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can watch our videos going forward. And then come right back and he's gonna share with us some embarrassing stories. really fun reading the comments of people that commented when Dana told her moments and a lot of you said that I should do mine so I've got some like I said I don't get embarrassed too easily one of them that jumps out is middle school I played drums and we had a horrible drum teacher we had a concert the band teacher basically had us drummers practice by ourselves and then had the band completely practiced by themselves and we literally only played together like twice plus it was myself and another guy and we we're supposed to do this pretty complicated little drum thing during it he got off and so my mistake was trying to get him on and looking at him and I lost track of where we were and so we played too long in a certain section and the director stopped everything walked back told us to sit down <laughs> So, of course, I was pissed and that pretty much ended my uh, uh, band playing. I stopped playing after that, lost my interest in playing band. I was kind of sick of the teacher anyway. So, that was really embarrassing. Middle school, everything's embarrassing. There was a thing, I remember, it had to be third or fourth grade because we moved in between fourth and fifth. But I went to school with a, a white, just like a t-shirt, like an undershirt, underwear, whatever. And I totally didn't realize it until I was at school. And everyone asked me like, well, why are you just wearing a white t-shirt? And I told them that it actually had a decal. I'm pretty smart for a little third, fourth grader. I said it actually had a decal, but then in the watches it faded. And I didn't realize how faded it was until I came to school. That was my excuse to cover up the fact that I had basically worn my underwear type shirt to school. So I find that funny. One of the other ones, and this is classic, it was like a movie where we knew each other, but we weren't like best friends. It was like school acquaintance. And she was a cute girl. We were at the mall, myself and some other friends. And I saw her with some of her friends down the way of kind of the mall. And she waved. And so I waved back but only realized that she was actually waving to someone behind me <laughs> so that was pretty embarrassing when I realized like, what oh she's not actually waving to me because <laughs> you know she's one of the like cute girls in school and stuff like that um, so I remember being embarrassed about that one time uh, kind of an embarrassing thing we went to go skiing pulled up started getting out of the car my mom drove us again probably middle school or something I realized I hadn't put my skis in the car luckily we lived close to the little, little ski resort there yeah it was kind of like are you kidding me like I uh, don't have my skis so that was kind of funny and I, my friends were just like, really? One that happened not too long ago, and actually is both funny, embarrassing, whatever, is Kaylee, oldest daughter, had a project that she needed to have dropped off at the school. So I drove down to the school, I went into the office, I'm like, hey, you know, my daughter's gonna pick this up, um, school, it's early morning type thing. Anyways, I start to drive home, but I'm on the phone, Kaylee's like, hey, where's the project? Uh, it's not here, where's that? The way the school is laid out, there's literally like one office. There's no other office. And so I'm like, it's at the front desk. You just go in and ask for it. Told them your name. I can't find it. We went there. Is it this office? Is that office? And I start, I mean, I got really mad because I thought she just wasn't really trying very hard. And so I got super pissed at her. I'm like, it's at the office. What are you talking about? So I drive back to the school. I go into the school like upset and frustrated because my daughter can't figure out where this project is. I go into the front and I'm like, yeah, my daughter's having trouble finding this office. I need to like call her on the intercom or something like that. And so the, the lady, at the front counter are trying to figure out and help me. And a good friend of ours, she is actually, I think at the time was the assistant principal. She's now the principal. Um, she's a super good friend, really cool person, level-headed. No, she, she was the principal last year. Was she the principal at the time? Yeah, she was e principal last year. Either way, she comes walking into the office and she sees me and she's like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, Kay I dropped a project off for Kaylee and she just says she can't find the office and I'm like super mad and everything. <laughs> and she carries her name. She goes, well, isn't Kaylee at the high school? <laughs> She's I had, the principal at the middle school. Yes, yeah, she's the principal at the middle school. I had never been to the high school before. I totally zoned the fact that my daughter was at the high school, which is like across the parking lot. And so here I was being all upset, you know, like, my daughter, I can't figure this out. I'm like, I want you to call her on the intercom right now. Standing in the office, kind of making a fool of myself. And then she comes in and is just like, well, is it Abby who was at the middle school? And I'm like, no, no, it's Kaylee. And she's like, well, Kaylee's at the high school. <laughs> 
And so all these ladies, Carrie's standing there, and I just start like, I'm like, oh man, I'm such an idiot. Like, oh gosh, I totally zoned it. Oh man, I'm such an idiot. Like, oh gosh, I totally zoned it. And I started laughing. And then you had to call Kaylee. And then I took it to the school and I called Kaylee and said, I'm sorry, I dropped it off. Sorry for getting mad and everything. And it was really confusing for Kaylee because of course she's like at the office. Like, where is it? It's not here. They don't know anything about it. But apparently <laughs> the ladies at the office told Carrie later that they're like, oh, we're so glad you came in because he looked like he was about to just get really <laughs> mad. So that was, I felt kind of stupid. And the fact that she's a good friend and just pointed out the obvious, like, uh, yeah, so she's in high school and this is the middle school. So that was hilarious. And Kaylee yeah, still says she's her friend. He was saying, telling it this morning and Kaylee says her friends are still making fun of her for... Yeah, her friends still kind of give her her time Okay, about, I can't even figure out what school to go to. Figure out what to. school to go to and stuff. <laughs> That's probably one of my most recent embarrassing ones I can think of. There's one that, I don't know, Dana brought up. I didn't think it was embarrassing. I thought it was hilarious. But, I was uh, mortified. Well, you want to come be on camera? Please? Yeah, I'll come be on. We're matching. We're matching. We're both wearing gray. <laughs> nice. Caught the vibes of the rainy skies here in Seattle, I guess. Yeah. All so, right, so, so I'll so correct we... all the wrong parts of his memory of, of this yeah. story. So go we ahead. were on our honeymoon and we decided to go to Pisa, which I don't recommend. And so afterwards we went to a little cafe in the what, town of Pisa, I guess. Yeah. Um, but we missed the bus to head out of Pisa. Yeah, we kind of wanted to explore though because we thought the town was worth exploring. It's but not. it's not. It's all destroyed in the war except the one tower and it's not worth saying. Yeah. Anyways, so we then thought, well, let's just get lunch. We'll stay at a little cafe. And so we're out on the, you know, Italian street and um, we're get our food. Dan is not a big fan of seafood. Uh, anyway, so I had yeah. some sort of rice with uh, clams, mussels, I don't know, different seafood in it. And mm -mm. I, she refused to try any of it. It makes me gag thinking about it. <laughs> so <laughs> like, at one point, I took a little mussel. We're day six of our honeymoon. And like day six of marriage at this point, basically. Yeah, but we've been dating for four years, so it's not like... I understand that, but honeymoon period is way different. <laughs> so, go ahead. So I then took a bite and ate everything but the little mussel. And then I leaned over, because it's our honeymoon, I leaned over to give her a little kiss. And I, <laughs> and I thought it was so cute that he was wanting to kiss me. It was cute. In a cute little cafe in, in Italy. So romantic. I know. And so then I slipped the little muscle into her mouth. Uh, you know, little tongue skills there. And uh, disgusting. I literally threw up all over. You didn't throw no, up. I threw you it up out, out of my mouth. So here we are, and there was a table like directly behind us, a couple tables. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're looking like the cute little couple, and we lean in to kiss, and then all of a sudden Dana's like, Pugh! spitting on the ground and the lady behind the her couple, an older couple uh, yeah. I just remember the ladies look uh, behind us of course she goes from like here's a couple that's kissing to all of a sudden she's spitting on the ground like what's going on the look on her face I totally laughed I wasn't embarrassed I thought it was funny when I told like I told the lady I'm like he slipped me a muscle and I can't handle him and she was like how dare he you guys look so cute all sitting here all and I'm like yeah we're on our honeymoon it's a little embarrassing see yeah I thought it was hilarious it was funny but it was disgusting and like I can't even you just need to try no, there's a, if it's slimy, mm -mm, not happening. If it's white fish and it's breaded, salmon is, I'm getting more accustomed to salmon. If it's flavored really, really well, I just, I'm not like die hard. See, I won't eat like Do we have any embarrassing moments as a couple? Um, as a couple? I told the one of us getting caught by the flea. Yeah. I told that one. I... So if you want to watch that one, you can go watch my video. You probably video. told it correctly. I did tell it correctly. You watched it. Yeah, it seemed like it was correct. Yeah, it was correct. I don't need him to correct me. I get the story oh, right. please. Because I'm the detail girl. No. He doesn't remember the details. No, you like embellish. No. Um, Do you want to tell your, your uh, Christmas talk story? And I'll give you all the, I'll give you guys all the right details. I'll tell the story because they he ask you. They ask. No, no, you're not telling the story. Okay. They ask you to give a talk at church like a month ahead of time. Great, fine. Well, normally they give you a topic. They did give me a topic. No, they yeah, did they not. Did. I'm no, I gave talk. Um, so I'm just like okay, in fine. In December. Yeah, it's in December. Christmas Sunday. I didn't know it was Christmas Sunday. Exactly. My I point. Just, I just wake up, I go to work, I do my thing, <laughs> and then one day I wake up and then it's go, hey, it's Christmas. I know. Uh, Typical man. So I show up to church and uh, a family friend, Mark, he comes up and he's like talking to go, oh, you're talking today and stuff because he think he saw the bulletin or whatever. He's like. Oh, you know, it's a lot of pressure. And I'm like, why is it a lot of pressure? I mean, yeah, talking's not fun and, you know, pressure. And he's like, well, it's Christmas Sunday. Like the Christmas Sunday talk. And I'm like, oh crap. Like, I guess this is the, fun <laughs> the Sunday right before Christmas. Christmas was like in a, like four days or something. And it's so, still the Christmas talk. I know. I just didn't register that. His topic, the, completely not no, talk Christmas it, it, related. It wasn't as Christmas focused as it should have been. At all. And I told him that at the beginning. I'm like, yeah, so I kind of <laughs> forgot that Christmas is in a few days. So I learned, so, I learned that I didn't hear 
overhear this conversation he had with the other guy, I learned from the pulpit that he had not realized what his topic should be. Well, I announced it. I just said, well, it's not as Christmas focused <laughs> as one might expect, like, but it's, it, it includes Christ and stuff, so I'll do he my worked best. It. I worked it the best I could, but. Sorry, the kids are upstairs doing PE on their virtual calls. Oh, is she? That's what it is. Yeah. That's cool. Sorry. Um, that was, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any PE embarrassing. You guys need to leave uh, your little embarrassing stories below. Yes. Um, Save us this from is super our... fun. I mean, I can't think of any like PE. I, I can think... think of what happened to other people. There's other embarrassing stories from other people. What's one story? That... Poor girl, like in what freshman year of high school or something, we're taking swimming class and she's on the, the diving board oh, no. and begins to have what, you know. Oh. And so the teacher's like, get in the water, get in the water. Yeah, that's so the last place you should go. If you're doing that, then they have to shut the pool down. No, they don't. Yes, they Chlorine do. Chlorine dilution. Mm, they should have. Anyway, the teacher told her to jump in the water, but of course, Oh, too late, too late. Oh, I feel so bad. See, girls have, especially in middle school and high school, have oh, way hell. more embarrassing stories. Oh, yeah, man. Total, like, yeah. Boys are just For what we have to go through. Girls are like becoming women and all that stuff. Like, yeah, it's way, middle school just sucks. <laughs> I mean, it does. I'm trying to think, like, I don't, yeah, no, middle school is get just... very embarrassed, I guess. So, in a lot of these stories, it's like, I'm more embarrassed than he is for some of these stories. Well, now Moose makes it funny for me because she gets embarrassed and I just laugh. <laughs> not fair at all. Oh, well, when one time coming back from our honeymoon, I wasn't embarrassed. I was mad. We would remember all the fuss of getting on the plane. Delayed, whatever. I mean, we went through craziness to get on our plane, and they give me my uh, well, first uh, seating of all, we... assignment. Oh, okay, go ahead. Seating assignment, you know, the little ticket they give you, which I don't know if they do that anymore. I'm going down the aisle, and it was like, you know, 26, 27, and mine said like row 28 or something like that. And I'm like, 27, 29. <laughs> There's they no... literally skipped over. Yeah. And so I'm standing there with my thing and I'm like there's no row with for my seat and we'd already been through tons of stuff so we're stressed we're like delayed we're tired and the stewardess comes walking out was like well maybe we need to go back out to the gate and and everything and I just was like I am not leaving this plane I am not <laughs> there's going a lot out of the backstory yeah. to this story and this was just yeah. before 9-11 I'm sure had I gotten that mad that, that mad they might have like called the sheriffs and yeah you would have gotten arrested because, for because how mad you got during that trip I was just like I am not getting off this plane because we well, oh, no, no, no. Let me just. We had to tell the ticket counter lady she wasn't gonna like. Okay, let us. me give some backstory to this and why, how, why he was so mad he was, and then tell you actually how close we were to 9/11 to explain like how close he was to going to jail. Okay. I wasn't going to no, jail, no. But... Let me explain just a little bit. I won't give you all the I details. I remember in the other part of it. Okay, so let me just. I'm better with you. Do be, I'm better with details. So we're at we're at the end of our honeymoon. We get to the airport. They forgot to send a Delta plane to pick all 300 passengers up. Okay. Yeah. So that was our first problem. We had an entire crew cruise line Delta. of older people on our on our flight. They had just come off of a cruise, you know, at where we were at Venice. They had just come off and they were all on our flight and all connecting so the flight gets delayed. to the we US. We then get, we fly to London? Yeah, London, London and London. then to the US. Like New York or something. We're supposed to, but we land in London and have to go through their little thing. Totally backed up. Yeah. We're obviously going to miss our connection flight. We're and all 300 up. people yeah, on our plane miss. were connecting with this same flight that we were connecting on. Or another one. I mean, they're all missing it. So by the time we get up, they ticket us to get on the plane. So we go, we get on the plane. Well, they didn't want to delay the plane just for us. They didn't want to. So they tell us, if you run now, you can get up there. And they said, go around the corner, go up the stairs. We ran around the corner, there's no stairs. And we're like, right. and then the other thing was taking us out of the airport. I didn't even know how we got to the gate. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, we go up to the gate and we're like, we're here. They just sent us and they're like, well, you... Missed your flight. You're gonna miss your well, flight. We already boarded. We already They're like, yeah, the no, we're not gonna do it, whatever. But the plane hadn't even... And it, the lady refused to help us. And then she, the thing that really set me off was, I'm standing there, I'm like, look, they sent us up here and they said, get on the plane. And so we, we're bringing this to you. We're ready to get on the plane. And we, the plane, we can see it right there. Right. Why aren't you like helping us get on the plane? And at one point, another person comes up and she like just ignores me and lets that other person come up. And so I let that person do their thing. And then another person just didn't knows nothing what's going on. So, well, up and I just kind of put my arm on the counter, you know, like this, which was an obvious, no chance in hell are you getting in front of me. And that person was just like, okay, I'm just going to stand here. We start arguing with the ticket counter lady. Finally, her supervisor comes over and is like, what's going on? We explain the situation. And she's like, then why don't we call a tower and delay the flight? Yeah. Because they also know that there's 300 pe old people. We ran. It was like amazing we race. We ran to the gate. But we've got all these old people. Sorry. <laughs> 
Does she want us to be quiet? I don't know. Okay. But we're like, you you got to delay this flight because we've got 300 people. You're going to have to redirect all of these people in like five minutes if you don't just delay this flight. But the supervisor understood the situation. So he delayed the, the flight, was, let us on the plane. Well, the person was being ridiculous. They ticketed us, gave us seats. We got on the plane and then again, I'm going down. Yeah. And my row's not there. Yeah. So I'm like, what the crap? Also. And I was like, I am so, not getting off this plane. Also, the plane is the one, whatever. It's not the biggest plane, but it's the one that has three, five, and three. So like massive plane. He's back on like the left side of the plane, the very far back corner. And I'm up about 20 rows on the opposite side of the plane. And the lady's like, I don't think we're going to get any of the, to me, she's like, I don't think we're going to actually get all 300 of those other people to the skate in yeah, time. Yeah, it didn't. We're probably not going to have anyone else on this flight. We're, there's literally five people on this whole entire plane maybe in first class there was more but not back where we were at so she just told me and she's like it doesn't really matter what just your ticket says you can just go ahead and lay down i'm gonna go eat his plus she pillows. also said why don't you go sit with him and calm him down yeah she's like is that your husband back there <laughs> causing a ruckus and i said yeah i don't know if i want to sit by him she's like well let me go and talk and figure out what their the lady was being ridiculous at the mine time. was fine his was not he was still irate and so they eventually gave us two whole rows they of the cool. five seats we got on the plane and everything but then the funny thing is we land in new york and we are like okay and now we're gonna go to the next flight. They but had booked me out of JFK and booked him out of LaGuardia. Yeah, they didn't bother so, telling us that we were going to two different airports. Yeah, yeah so they way, quickly they switched us out our flights. Two ones without telling us. Yeah. And, it, and either way, they were like, yeah, that's not gonna work. You're never gonna make it to the other airport in time. Not that we would separate on our honeymoon. But uh, anyways, we made it back. And that was like a week before 9 no. So we made it back from our honeymoon and we flew to to Utah, because that's where I was currently living when we got married. We boxed, we everything, boxed up. everything up in his truck, and like the Throw next that. day, and we drove to Seattle with all of my belongings and his stuff from the honeymoon, and we arrived in Seattle to our first apartment on September 10th. 19 years ago. You were going to go to the job interview the very And I was day. doing my job interview oh, yeah. the next morning when 9-11 happened. That's how close we were. Well, otherwise we would have been stuck in Italy. We would have been stuck in Italy. Which he could have been great, arrested not... at the airport. If we I were anywhere close to 9-11. I wouldn't have been arrested, but... With our high rate. Getting stuck in Italy sounds great, but if you don't have money and resources... Well, I actually, eventually didn't get that job, so we had no money. Anyway. Well, yeah, but... We didn't know that. We didn't have any money when we went to Italy. I know. Oh. Um, <laughs> That's it. This is longer than I thought, but it was kind of fun to do. And I didn't think he'd have too many embarrassing stories. He doesn't get embarrassed. Maybe that's a guy thing. I don't know. Maybe if there's any guys watching. There's not very many. I already know my stats on this channel. There's not very many men watching this, which is totally fine. You can leave your embarrassing stories down below. But thank you for yeah, joining us, do. you guys. And I just want you to know that if you're watching this and you are like a regular, but you have not subscribed, because I only have 11% of my subscribers actually watching, subscribe because that is how. It, you guys support us. Like watching it supports us, but subscribing tells YouTube that you support us. Plus and comments, we I totally enjoy comments. I read well. all of them, I try to comment on all of them, share them with your friends. I mean, we just enjoy doing this, good memories. And we love interacting with you guys. So we just want to reach more people and we can do that by letting YouTube know that you guys like watching, so. Yeah, but make sure you leave your comments of your embarrassing moments below. If yeah. you didn't leave it on her video, leave, leave it on here. mine. Let us know if you like my embarrassing stories more than his embarrassing stories. Yes, it's always a competition. It's always a competition. So, yeah. Anyway, take care, you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Um,